Okay, so uh, let us continue with our discussion. Uh, so, you know, the general theme is a theme of uh, zeros of analytic functions, and uh, uh, what we saw last time was the so called open mapping theorem, which said that if you take a non constant analytic function uh, defined on a domain, then it is an open map, so it maps open sets to open sets. The image of an open set under such a map is again an open set, okay. Um, so, what I am going to do now is uh, uh, prove the so called uh, you know the so called inverse function theorem which is uh, uh, which is essentially the statement that you know if you have an analytic function that does not van that uh, uh, whose derivative does not vanish at a given point then there is a small disk around that point uh, there is a small neighborhood around that point where the analytic function is 1 to 1 okay and not only that uh, the inverse function which can be defined because it is 1 to 1 is also analytic okay and the inverse function has is given by an integral formula okay so this is what we are going to see today so let me let me <coughs> let me uh, uh, let me put that as a title of today's uh, talk or rather the aim of today's talk uh, the the uh, inverse function theorem so uh, so what is the uh, what is the uh, 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 theorem uh, and well I will call this a simple statement so the simple statement is uh, let uh, uh, in every neighborhood in uh, at every at every for every point for every point for a point uh, uh, z0 uh, where the analytic function f of z has non vanishing derivative which is the statement that f dash of z0 uh, uh, is non zero okay uh, there there is there is uh, a neighborhood uh, of z0 restricted to which which uh, f is 1 to 1 uh, or, or injective okay and uh, uh, the, the the function the 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 inverse function f inverse uh, that is that is so defined on uh, the uh, image of this neighborhood is also analytic okay uh, so this is the statement of the the inverse function theorem the simple statement okay so if i so if i draw a diagram it's something like this so here is a so there is some domain uh, some domain I am drawing a bounded domain but uh, bounded domain enclosed by a, a simple closed curve but it may not look like that it is some domain and by and by a domain we always mean an open connected set okay 
and uh, this is in the source complex plane which is the z plane and you see on this domain d uh, there is defined an analytic function w equal to f of z uh, which takes values in the w plane or the omega plane which is another copy of complex numbers so this is the w plane and uh, I am considering a point suppose I consider a point z0 such that uh, the corresponding point w0 which is equal to f of z0 uh, is its image okay and suppose I assume that f dash of z0 is not equal to 0 so that means that uh, uh, this is the fact uh, that I have put here in the hypothesis that it has non vanishing derivative okay f dash of z is the derivative of f of z and its value at z0 uh, so when I say non uh, uh, the non matching derivative is at z0 okay then uh, the the claim is that that I can find a neighborhood for example a small disk surrounding z0 okay where restricted to which the function becomes one to one okay and uh, uh, if I call this uh, disk as uh, uh, something let me call this as uh, d naught okay uh, uh, or let me even call it delta naught then what happens is that f of delta naught uh, uh, will be uh, 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 will be a will will be a neighborhood of w naught in fact it will be a disk you can uh, very well expect it to be a disk like neighborhood of w naught so uh, so let me so you know uh, okay so I need to remove this and draw something like this here uh, w0 is uh, so this is f of delta0 is this disc disc like neighborhood and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, w0 is just f of z0 and what happens is that from this image disk uh, from this image f of delta delta naught you have a an inverse function which is given by f inverse it is given by w uh, z equal to f inverse of w that is the inverse function okay and the fact is that uh, the fact is first of all that f restricted to this uh, uh, this uh, disc delta naught is one to one okay there is a disc delta naught a neighborhood of z naught restricted to which f is one to one and therefore uh, and the image of this delta naught will be the set f of delta naught you must remember that uh, if you recall the uh, open mapping theorem because f is a of course uh, uh, mind you it has not uh, uh, the derivative at z0 does not vanish therefore f cannot be a constant function so it is a non constant analytic function because if the function is a constant analytic function then this derivative will be 0 identically 0. So the fact that the analytic function has non vanishing derivative at one point tells you that uh, the function is a non constant analytic function and what we saw in the previous lecture was that such a non constant analytic function is an open mapping that is it always takes open sets to open sets so if you take this disc delta naught which is this open disc centered at z naught of suitable radius okay then its image will always be uh, an open set okay which I am drawing for convenience like a disc okay and the theorem the inverse function theorem says that f restricted to delta naught is injective it is one to one therefore you can f inverse is defined for every point w in f of delta naught so there is a inverse function like this set theoretic inverse function that is because for uh, every z there is a unique w uh, for every z uh, you have w equal to f of z and for every w here there is a unique z here such that f of z equal to that w okay so you have a inverse set theoretic inverse map and what the inverse function theorem says is that this is not this inverse function is actually analytic okay 
and uh, in other words what you are saying is f restricted to delta naught is a holomorphic or analytic isomorphism of delta naught with f of delta naught it is a holomorphic isomorphism analytic isomorphism because this way the map is uh, holomorphic or analytic and f inverse is also holomorphic and analytic and both are inverses of each other because f is 1 to 1 okay. So this is the inverse function theorem okay this is a simple statement okay. So the more complicated uh, statement is uh, is giving you is this is the statement that will give you what this delta naught exactly is it will give you what this delta naught is it will tell you how to calculate this it will give you a formula for f inverse okay that is the more deeper statement. So let me write down the more deeper statement here okay so theorem uh, this is uh, uh, more uh, I should say more uh, 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 involved statement what is a more involved statement so uh, let uh, f be analytic uh, uh, at a point z0 okay mind you this means that f is uh, an analytic function defined in an open neighborhood containing z0 so it is analytic at a analytic at a point of course means analytic in a neighborhood of the point that is what analytic means okay differentiable in a neighborhood of a point which is analytic in the neighborhood of the point uh, suppose uh, f dash of z0 is not equal to zero okay suppose the derivative of f does not vanish at z0 of course it is analytic therefore that is holomorphic so it is it means it is differentiable and you know it is differentiable once and it is differentiable infinitely many times because that is the speciality of analytic functions so first derivative exists and higher derivatives exist but the fact is the first derivative at z0 is non zero okay that is the assume that is the assumption choose choose uh, 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 rho uh, so so the uh, so let me rub this off and say something I want to say that since you have a non so so this implies that f is a non constant analytic function this is this this is something that I should uh, so f is a non constant analytic function on uh, 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 in a neighborhood uh, uh, around set okay so it is a non constant analytic function of course when I say around z0 I mean in uh, disk surrounding z0 okay and uh, you know the no if, a, if a function is a non constant analytic function you know that it is uh, zeros are isolated okay a non constant analytic function for a non constant analytic function zeros are isolated and uh, mind you uh, if a, if you take w0 to be the value of f at z0 then z0 is a 0 of f of z minus w0 okay this is a trick that we have always been using. Uh, all these uh, during all the previous lectures okay so uh, put w0 equal to f of z0 then uh, uh, z0 is a 0 of uh, order 1 of f of z minus w0 okay so let me explain this of course if if you take the function f of z minus w0 okay and if I plug in z equal to z0 I will get 0 so z0 is z equal to z0 is a 0 of this function no doubt okay and the fact that uh, the derivative of this function at z0 is the same as f dash of z0 because minus w0 is only a constant if I take the derivative of this I will simply get f dash z and if I plug in z0 I will get f dash z0 this is not 0 since the first derivative is not 0 it means it is a 0 of order 1 okay you see uh, if you want uh, maybe maybe I can uh, maybe I can recollect uh, something from uh, say 
basic complex analysis uh, for you. You see, uh, so you can recall uh, 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 an analytic. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, an, uh, an analytic function function uh, non constant of course non constant uh, has a 0 so I call the function g of z okay has a 0 of uh, uh, of uh, order uh, r at z equal to z naught if you know uh, g of z can be written as z minus z naught power r times h of z okay with you know uh, with h of z analytic uh, around z naught at z naught and h dash of z naught is not equal to 0. This is what is meant by uh, a function having a zero of certain order at the point z minus z naught. That means, you see, a function having a zero of order r at z equal to z naught means z minus z naught to the power of r can be factored out from the uh, Taylor series of the function centered at the point z naught. That's exactly what it says. Of course, if I put if I put z equal to z naught here, I'll get zero, okay. And the uh, the the order of the zero is the is this power is the power of z minus z naught. So you know what you must understand is that uh, uh, it follows it follows that uh, you know if you calculate g dash of z naught and so on, and you go on up to g uh you know r minus 1 of z naught they will all be 0 h should not have a 0 at z naught that is correct that is correct it is not h dash thanks yeah that is uh, see the 0 when you write the function in this form z naught should not be a 0 of this part that is important that is correct that is correct thank you for pointing out I missed that. So you see so h of z naught is not it is not h dash you are right h of z naught is not 0 okay and see what happens is that if you start differentiating g uh, up to r minus 1 times and you substitute z naught you will still get 0 okay but if you differentiate it r times you won't get 0 okay because if you differentiate it r times uh, if you use a product rule and do it okay then you will have one term uh, which will involve uh, 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 so you know uh, so for example you know if 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 so you know uh, so for example uh, if you take g of z let us let us put z minus z naught power let us put 1 into h of z suppose r equal to 1 you know if you differentiate it once you will get uh, you know by product rule z minus z naught constant I will get h dash of z plus h of z into differentiation of z minus z naught is just 1 and if I calculate g dash of z naught I will simply get h of z naught and that is not 0. So if r is equal to 1 then uh, h of z naught is uh, non 0 and g dash of z naught is non 0 okay and so, so you can now you can you can generalize it okay uh, if you have this situation then g r of z naught will not be 0 the so you know g 1 g dash is the first derivative g I will put a round bracket here saying that this is the r minus 1 derivative but g uh, if I calculate g r derivative at z naught that will not be 0 okay. So, so this is so this is example when r equal to 1 alright similarly you, you can try it out for r equal to 2 3 and so on alright. So the point is that when you uh, you can write g as z minus z naught to that power which is the order of the 0 times a function which does not have a 0 at z naught okay and what does this mean see this is just a reflection of the fact that the Taylor series for g centered at z naught starts only from uh, the, the the Taylor coefficients are all 0 uh, 
uh, up to uh, the first the first r coefficients are all zero that's what it means see because you know uh, so you know if if you if you look at it in another way you see what is g of z as a taylor series it will be uh, a not plus a 1 z minus z not into plus a 2 z minus z not squared and so on okay and what are the ai the ais are just uh, the uh, ith derivative of g at z not by uh, so an is just the nth derivative of g at z not by factorial n right these are this is the taylor series all right and uh, if you so you know the 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 derivatives from the first uh, uh, and of course g of z not is also zero mind you so a not is zero okay, okay a1 is a multiple of the first derivative which is zero and so on all the first up to the first r minus 1 a a not up to a r minus 1 will all be zero so the power series will start with the first term which will correspond to z minus z not to the power of r so what will happen is that g of z will just be z minus z not power r it will start only like this this will be the first term i mean this will be the first power that you will get and of course uh, uh, the 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 coefficient will be of course ar then you will get then it will start from here it will be a r plus 1 uh, z minus z not to the power of r plus 1 and it will go on like this and the fact is that if you factor out z minus z not power r from this what you will get out what you will get re the, the remaining that you will get will be the power series expansion for h of z at centered at z0 and the power the power series have to be the same because there is an identity theorem for power series the power series uh, surround uh, expansion at a point the taylor series is unique okay and it's unique basically because it's given by these derivatives and the derivatives are of course unique okay so what you must understand is this is exactly what is happening when you take a zero of order r if z0 is a zero of order r then you know uh, the uh, that is signified by saying that the first r minus 1 derivatives uh, including the function which is thought of as the 0 derivative okay they all vanish at that point but the rth derivative will not vanish. So in particular you know if you take r equal to 1 that is the situation here in this case z0 is a 0 of fz minus w0 okay and z0 is only a 0 of order 1 because it is the derivative of this function is f dash of z and when you evaluate it at z0 you will get f dash of z0 and f dash of z0 is not 0 okay if, we, if it had been a 0 of order greater than 1 then f dash of z0 would have also become 0 okay. So that should tell you that this is a derivative of I mean it is a 0 of order 1 for this function okay. Now uh, uh, we can find a delta uh, uh, okay so uh, so let me say something else so let me go back so this is about I mean this is all this was just to recall uh, what order means okay now go back to this function see f of z is a non constant analytic function so f of z minus w0 is also a non constant analytic function and the zeros of a non constant analytic function are isolated all the zeros are isolated therefore the z the, the zeros of this non constant analytic, func analytic function are also isolated in particular the zero z0 is also isolated so there is a disk surrounding z0 where there are no other zeros okay so so since the zeros of a non constant analytic function are isolated there exists a rho positive uh, such that f of z minus minus w0 has no 0 in 0 strictly less than mod z minus z0 
less than or equal to rho okay this is because of isolation of uh, zeros of a non constant analytic function okay so that in other words i have excluded zero mind you because when i put zero z has to be equal to z0 and z0 is of course a zero but this is a deleted closed disk centered at z0 on which there are no other zeros and that is such a disk exists because of uh, you know uh, isolation of uh, zeros of a non constant analytic function okay so th so there is a row like this all right now also there exists a delta positive such that the modulus of f of z minus uh, w not is greater than or equal to delta on for z with mod z minus z not equal to rho okay i mean this is a fact that we have used a uh, couple of times even in the even in the uh, earlier proofs for example in the proof of uh, uh, the open mapping theorem right so uh, so what i'll have to do is um, i wrote it here so let me rub this off so that i can continue with the statement of the theorem okay so uh, so let me continue here um so you see the uh, uh this is something that we have uh, you know always been using the function f of z minus w not uh, is uh, uh, if you take that function that function is not going to vanish on the on this deleted neighborhood so in particular if you take the boundary of this deleted neighborhood which is the circle mod z minus z not equal to rho circle centered at z not radius rho is not going to vanish on that circle okay so it's a uh, but that circle is both uh, you know it's compact connected and uh, this is mod fz minus w not is a continuous function the continuous real valued function on a compact uh, connected set therefore its image on the real line is going to be a compact connected subset of the real line and therefore it has to be a closed interval okay and uh, delta is the minimum value uh, uh, or uh, uh, in that closed interval namely it is the left hand point of the closed interval okay so such a delta can be found okay the fact is that so what the inverse function theorem says is uh, uh, for each uh, for each uh, z in mod z minus z not lesser than uh, lesser than uh, uh, rho okay uh, f of z is uh, 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 f dash of z is not equal to zero okay so see the derivative uh, you assume is uh, uh, doesn't vanish at at z not okay but the fact is that in this disk okay the derivative is never going to vanish at any point that's one that's one claim okay uh f is 1 1 1 to 1 on mod z minus z not six strictly less than rho this is the disk on which f is 1 to 1 okay uh for every for every w with mod w minus w not strictly less than delta okay this is the uh, this is the target region uh, in the uh, w plane okay there exists a unique z with mod z minus z not strictly less than rho such that uh, f of z is w okay and in fact uh z is equal to f inverse w is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z mod zeta minus z not equal to rho okay uh uh zeta uh, f dash of zeta d zeta pi f of zeta minus w this is the inverse this is the inverse formula for the inverse function 
so you see this expresses f inverse of w okay uh, of course this is for mod w minus w not lesser than delta okay so the the formula for the inverse function is given in this is given like this okay the formula for the inverse function is given like this uh, and the claim is that f inverse as a function of w is also analytic further of w for uh, mod w minus w not less than delta okay so this is the uh, this is the strong uh, or the more involved statement of the inverse function theorem so it tells you what is that disk it is a certain disk centered at z0 radius rho okay and it also tells you what is the uh, target disk the target uh, region on which you can write out the formula for the inverse that is also a disk centered at w0 and its radius is delta where delta is the uh, you know uh, minimum value of f of z of of mod fz minus w0 on uh, for z varying on this boundary disk okay this is what the inverse function theorem says okay so uh, so let's let's try to uh, prove this so the first thing i want to say is that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the the first question that i want to think about is the following uh so so uh, see there are several things i have to prove i have to show it's one to one okay then i have to show that uh, uh, uh once once it is one to one then i have to sh then i will have to show that the inverse function is given by this formula then i have to show that f inverse is an analytic function of w okay these are the three things i have to do now how do i show it's one to one i actually go back to the essentially to the proof of the open mapping theorem okay so it takes me back to the proof of the open mapping theorem and what's the proof so you see so you know let's let's look at this see what is a uh, number of zeros of f of z minus w not in mod z minus z not equal to rho okay so it's you know the basically it is the argument principle it is the counting principle which is just uh, counting the number of zeros of an analytic function inside a closed simple closed curve which is just given by the argument principle which is just the residue theorem applied to the logarithmic derivative of the function so what is the number of zeros if i call that as n of w not the number of zeros uh of uh, f of z minus w not in this disk okay this is this is given by what i mean it is given by well uh, by the by the residue theorem it has to uh, i mean by the argument principle which is residue theorem applied to the logarithmic derivative of this it's just 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not is equal to rho okay of d log uh, f of z minus w not this is what it is if you take d log of a function of an analytic function and integrate it over a, a, a boundary curve a simple closed curve which is smooth contour and divide by 2 pi i you will get simply the uh, number of zeros minus number of poles okay but of course if the function has no uh, if it has no poles then you will just be getting the number of zeros counted with multiplicity and in this case uh, uh uh what is this this integral this integral is just 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not is equal to rho d log of that is just de derivative of that logarithmic derivative which is a derivative of this by uh by this function okay what you should understand is when i do whenever you do an integration the variable of integration lies on the boundary curve okay so for z lying on the boundary curve 
you know that mod of f of z minus w naught does not vanish because you what you have assumed is here what you have assumed here is that for ez lying on the boundary curve mod z minus z naught equal to rho the mod of f of z minus w naught is greater than or equal to delta which is a positive number okay and and mind you delta is positive because this doesn't vanish and why why this doesn't vanish is because it doesn't vanish at the only point where it vanishes in this in this closed disc centered at z naught radius rho is at the center okay and uh, the boundary certainly doesn't vanish so this this quantity uh, in the denominator uh, that never has a zero okay uh, uh, this this qu this quantity doesn't have a zero on the boundary it is a zero inside and that's what is counted by this and this and this is equal to 1 of course because the number of zeros uh, uh, number of uh, the number of zeros of this is just the number of times uh, f of z takes the value w naught and that's only once at z equal to z naught that's our assumption because it has only one zero and that zero is of order 1 okay so it's counted only once if zero is of order m you have to count it as m zeros okay but this is zero of order 1 so it's counted only as one zero and only at one point so you get one okay this is what you get but now more generally if you recall in the open mapping theorem the proof of the open mapping theorem what we did was we also defined n w the number of times uh, the uh, function f of z uh, 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 f of z takes the value w and how was that defined that was defined as 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z naught equal to rho of d log f of z minus w this is how we defined it and what is this uh, uh, how was this defined I mean which is which is what is uh, which is which is uh, which is equal to uh, the following uh, this is f dash of z dz by f of z minus w okay and for for what values of w does this integral make sense this is for uh, uh, w with mod w minus w naught uh, strictly less than delta strictly less than delta you see the fact is uh, the the way we have chosen uh, delta is such that the for on the boundary curve the distance of f of z from w naught is greater than or equal to delta okay. So if you choose a w whose distance from w naught is less than delta then the distance of f of z from that such a w can never be 0. So this quantity does not vanish on the boundary curve therefore this integral is well defined and this integral will give you the number of times the analytic function f of z assumes the value w in uh, inside this uh, curve inside this circle centered at z naught radius rho okay and in fact what we proved last time is if you uh, if you uh, if you recall we showed uh, in the proof of uh, in the course of the proof of the open mapping theorem that uh, n of w is an analytic function of w it is an analytic function of w n of w is an analytic function of w alright that is something that we proved and then what we concluded was you see n of w is an analytic function of w it is defined on this disc uh, centered at w naught uh, radius delta and uh, but the point is that n of w takes only integer values because it counts the number of zeros okay it counts the number of times it counts the number of zeros of f of z minus w which is the same as counting the number of times uh, f takes the value w for uh, uh, for ez inside the disc centered at z naught radius rho okay and that is an integer. So you have an analytic function of uh, whose values are in the integers okay such a function has to be a constant because 
n of w is an analytic function so it is continuous an analytic function is always continuous. So the image of this function image of this disc which is a connected set under a continuous map is always a connected set so what you should get is that the image of n of w is a connected subset of the integers that has to be a single integer. So what this will tell you uh, but n of w being integer value forces n of w is equal to constant that is equal to n of w0 which is equal to 1 because n of w0 is 1 because the number of times f assumes the value w0 is precisely once that is how the disk has been chosen because the disk has been chosen to have only this only one 0 the 0 z0 of f minus w0 okay so but what does this tell you this tells you that for every w in uh, such that mod w minus w0 is less than delta the number of times f assumes that value w is exactly 1 okay so what this will tell you is it will tell you two things it will tell you that the image of uh, the disc mod z minus z0 strictly less than rho contains this disc okay every value w which is within a dis del distance of delta from w0 is assumed by f at a point z which lies inside the disc mod z minus z0 uh, uh, strictly less than rho. So it tells you two things it tells you that f of mod z minus z0 less than rho contains the set mod mod w minus w0 strictly less than delta it tells you this plus it also tells you that the fact that it assumes every value once is also telling that it is 1 to 1 f is 1 to 1 you had it see the uh, what you must understand is the uh, the fact that it assumes every value uh, f f f of z minus f of z assumes the value w at a for only one point z okay and not for more than one point z but that is exactly saying that f is 1 to 1 so 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 we get this is this and uh, f is 1 to 1 on this disc okay so we have proved this fact we have proved the fact that f is 1 to 1 on the whole disc and it takes all the values uh, in the image disc it takes each value in the image disc exactly one time okay we have that proves this right and uh, so that is one thing um, the okay the uh, so so that proves uh, uh, so that proves if you go back to the statement of the theorem we have proved that f is 1 to 1 on this disc we have proved that for every w with mod w minus w0 less than delta that the disc in the target uh, complex plane w plane okay there exists a unique z that there exists a unique z is the 1 to 1 nature of f and that there exists an z is because n of w is equal to 1 the fact that n of w equal to 1 means that there is a point z for which f of z takes the value w and there is only one point okay so there exists a unique z with mod z minus z0 less than rho such that f of z equal to w okay so we have proved that so what is left out is only to show that the formula for f inverse in terms of w is given by this expression okay this is the only thing that is left out I have to show that this formula holds and I have to show that f inverse is also an analytic function so this is this is what is left out so I will I will do that in the in the next lecture.